Hi, my name is Jean Bourgeois, and I'm going to pre do a presentation on uh, Disney's Lion King um, and the class represent representations within that movie. Uh, I'm lab I'm titling this presentation "Keeping Lions as Lions" um, because it has to do with what happens when a different class that is not in power steps into power, and we'll see how Disney kind of reacts to that. So I will cover. Um, what the classes are in the movie, who the good guys are, as well as who are the bad guys, and uh, how does Disney deal with revolt, aka change of power. What I mean by this is when a um, class uh, steps into power and basically dethrones another class. I'll say it that way. So the classes are, I like, actually, I like this little quote by Verketa on page five of his article. <clears throat> After many attempts by Disney to represent race in a healthy way, the Lion King seems to finally succeed in doing it. Yet problems appeared when the hyenas came to the scene, uh, portrayed by three black actors. The hyenas are represented as being slobbery, mangy, stupid poachers and at the, bo and at the bottom of the food chain. <clears throat> um, so... Real quick, going through the list, the lions, of course, are the royal family. They're a class, right? Um, they are who are supposed to be in power. They've been in power, and they've been in power since anyone can remember. They've been in power since uh, all of living memory. Everyone uh, knows that the lions are on the top of the food chain, and everyone is okay with that because everyone knows their place in the circle of life. The circle of life being, of, of course, a term that Disney uses to illustrate where people belong in the world and like kind of the structure that the classes have and all that. And then the second class, the hyenas, the beggars, um, the poor, um, they're the much wealthy, well, much less wealthy and worse off class, the scummy and the beggars. They are the people who aren't meant to associate with the royal family at all. They live in the elephant graveyard, which um, is where Mufasa explicitly tells Simba not to go. Um, there's a little quote that uh, I have here by Shannon from his article, Virtual Insanity. Um, the first we hear of them being the hyenas. The first we hear of them, they are treated as a dangerous enemy. A mole reports to Zazu the mere presence of the hyenas who have crossed to the borderlands. Uh, excuse me, crossed the border into the pride lands. Um, he then re, uh, responds with a shock like to the king, if you guys remember this. Sire, hyenas in the pride, land, pride lands. Mufasa immediately leaves his son, urgently pursuing this report in person. Um, that's kind of how... The movie kicks off with if with the hyenas kind of crossing in the pride lands is a bad thing, um, and then how the hyenas are depicted right here. If you look at at this quote I have right here, the lions treacher the excuse me the Lion King's treacherous hyenas speak with a inner city African American dialect. Um, that's from Levente Perez on page forty six of his article. So uh, you guys kind of remember that that Whoopi Goldberg plays one of the hyenas, um, and the hyenas are immediately depicted as scummy as well as like very kind of. Uh, um, the 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 characters that they represent are mainly African American, Latino American, and they have like uh, those kind of accents, and they also are depicted as living in kind of ghetto areas, um, in the elephant graveyard, the not as wealthy areas, right? Um, another quote that I like is uh, from Gooding Williams. Um, how the hyenas are depicted. Uh, is in a sequence in which we see masses of hyenas goose-stepping before Scar, figured here as Hitler reviewing his troops at Nuremberg. Um, is It depicts the building in which the hyenas live in as bleak, as bleak-looking and overcrowded high-rise, uh, the ambiguous image of a housing development in the projects. Um, this is another way that Scar is depicted. He's depicted as Hitler, kind of. Um, but this is a part of the movie that doesn't get really drawn that much attention to later in the movie. Um, where he's kind of looking over all the hyenas marching in front of him that it looks like Hitler's army. Um, and right off the bat, Disney kicks off this depiction of these hyenas as very negative and evil kind of looking, uh, even though they have the, you know, the African-American um, uh, kind of depiction around them. Uh, the third class I'm going to talk about is the the rest of the African American animal kingdom, uh, the commoners. That this kind of everyone else uh, who is a part of the lion's kingdom and lands. Uh, we see them as very pleased with the current monarchy and very happy with their life that they're living, even if it means being eaten by the kings and being eaten by the and eating the people lower than them. It's a very pyramid shaped civilization. Okay, so moving on. Who are the good guys? Obviously, it's the royal family and its cohort. Um, I want to ask this question because I want. 
to talk about who Disney wants us to side with. It's an obvi it's obviously the royal family, um, who, as we know, are living easy and do not have many problems except for keeping order in their kingdom, which is what, of course, Mufasa does when he finds out hyenas are coming to the Pride Lands. Um, and we see that the lands are green and the sun is almost shining and everyone's happy when the good guys, quote unquote, good guys are in power. Um, but the royal family's cohort includes people like Mufasa, Simba, Sarabi. Sarabi's the mom. Uh, Nala. Nala is the girlfriend, I guess, of, Mufa, of uh, Simba. And then Zazu is the toucan. Um, are the good guys. But we see that um, there are a lot of other people who aren't in that group, of course, right? So more important question than who are the good guys is who aren't the good guys. So who are the bad guys, I guess? And that, of course, is Scar and the Hyenas. Um, the only these are the only ones depicted in a negative light are the minorities so the two the two groups of characters that are evil are the minorities because scar is kind of if you guys notice look at this uh quote right here the only person scar associates with our hyenas he is the only one with a black mane or a different skin tone from his family members um laventi perez has this little quote in his article that states evil uncle scar's mane is black and that does not happen in the lion in the uh animal kingdom at all having uh, a lion having a black mane so it's kind of this odd take that Mufasa Mufasa's brother Scar is darker skinned darker furred I guess he has darker um, hair and is evil and he associates with all the other minorities and uh, eventually uh, ends up killing uh, Mufasa and overthrowing him <clears throat> and then this is my third question how does Disney portray power change? Um, boom. Boom. When there's a power change, it involves the colored member of the family killing off the king, Mufasa. After the coup occurs, a coup being an, um, a change, maybe an overthrowing of a government, the lands fall into disrepair and becomes very much like the elephant graveyard or the low-income urban areas of a city. It looks like a ghetto. Because of this contrast from lush green lands to barren wastelands, the viewers... Want, the viewers want to be upset. The viewer wants to be upset at the hyenas and Scar for ruining what we had previously enjoyed from what we've known from the beginning of the movie. If you guys look at these two pictures right here, you'll see that um, here's the Pride Lands all happy and kind of lush and green. The sun is shining, and if you look after Mufasa is killed, Scar takes over the Pride Lands and becomes the king. Um, everything is just really gross looking. You can't really even tell the foreground from the background because everything is gray and very bleak. Um, this is how Disney shows what would happen after a power shift. Uh, if the people in power currently, white males, um, are no longer in power, I'm relating this to the modern day world now, are no longer in power, then we would see a dismantling of the world as we know it. This is very, this is a very interesting take on a kind of a modern Macbeth, excuse me, Hamlet, I'm sorry, um, application today's world. Um, the family that was in power that everyone's okay with gets overthrown and there's a different group, the minorities, and everything falls into disrepair and then Simba has to come back and kind of save the world. Um, so that's how Disney portrays the power chains in a very negative, negative light. Boom. Boom. In conclusion, um, I have some points here that I'm going to explain more. This isn't just what I'm talking about. Um, Disney has a massive, Disney is a massive company that has a huge influence on America's youth and families, even international families, right? But here's a quote that kind of extends that will show you how extended Disney is. We kind of read about them earlier in the term. <clears throat> this is by Shump, uh, Shumpeter in his uh, article, The Real Disney. He says, but its most value asset, Disney's most valuable asset, is ESPN, a cable sports network beloved by beer guzzling grownups, and Disney owns 80%. Um, another quote, this is by England in uh, his article on page 557. Uh, his quote says, The franchise now includes over 25,000 products and has contri and it contributed greatly to the rise of Disney's marketing sales from $30, $300 million in 2001 to $4 billion by 2008. So this shows that Disney does not only, you know, as you know, not only make movies and cartoons, but it also is a is a very well established company that has um it's thumbs in a lot of different pies especially modern media that is on the uh tv that we watch it owns espn so it has a very good foothold in what is said about it and what it wants people to think about it 
the reason I bring that up is because we now know Disney's weight and how um, powerful it is, but we want to know what this means to us. Um, this means that we should be more literate. We need to be uh, more educated on what we watch when it comes to Disney. Um, we need to know how we're influenced by it and how skewed Disney movies are and how they have been. Uh, the class represent the class representation in The Lion King is a perfect example of it. Uh, the the two people that we're not supposed to like in the movie are the only minorities in the movie, which is kind of an interesting topic, right? Um, we we there is a article I found where Disney does respond to the public, and I'm going to bring that up right now. That's why I'm flipping through stuff right now. Um, here's a quote about Disney responding to um the public being upset that there wasn't a African-American or anyone of color being the protagonist. And it says, uh, Princess Tiana is Disney's most firm answer to its critics for the absence of a non-white character in its line of princesses. It took 56 years for Disney to create a film that featured a darker-skinned hero and heroine. Um, the reason I brought that up is because um, it shows us that if we are literate and we know <clears throat> uh, what disney is and isn't doing then we can uh have no maybe a voice and opinion have it heard um that was in burrow's uh article on page 400 <clears throat> we need to see that disney is able to influence our, our youth and instill these ideas into their beings and it will be harder to educate them on what is actually happening in the movies if they're enchanted by the movies so that was kind of like earlier on when we were kind of wipe, wipe, wiping the pixie dust off our eyes um i'm not saying to pick aladdin apart to a seven-year-old, not to smash it and say, this is a horrible movie, Disney's horrible. I'm just saying, let them know that that actually isn't how the world is. Uh, being aware is key. When we're reading the media, boom, being aware. Um, and having media literacy is important in today's world where the media is over 80% of how we transfer any kind of information to each other. Um, so I wanted to tie in what I was talking about with the Lion King and stuff like that, how negative the minorities were looked upon and stuff um and to relate it to today's world and what we can look here's my work cited i'll leave this up for a couple seconds you can pause it on it but besides that um i'm done